How much does it cost to get into kiteboarding? Hi, my name's Tom and I've been instructing kiteboarding for the last eight years now. I've given hundreds of lessons and I've traveled all over the world to kite. It is truly one of my biggest passions. In this video, I'll be breaking down the cost to get into kiteboarding, from the equipment costs to taking lessons. By the end of this video, I hope that you have a better understanding on what to expect on your journey on becoming a kiteboarder, as well as I hope to provide you with some useful tips to save you money and time. If you find this video helpful at all, smash the like button below or subscribe to the channel. By doing so, this will help me continue to make videos like this. So let's get started. Lessons and equipment cost. Lessons typically run around $100 to $120 an hour, and typically schools will discount lessons the more hours you purchase. So how many hours do you need? On average, I would say most people need around six to 10 hours to become a level two kiteboarder. A level two rider is someone that knows how to launch and land the kite, body drag up wind, retrieve their board, is comfortable using the safety systems and is up and riding on the board. However, they may not be able to stay up wind or do their basic transitions consistently both ways. A level two rider doesn't necessarily need any more lessons at this point. However, it is a good idea to have an experienced rider or instructor keeping an eye on you. You just need a little more time on the water to Get that up when riding and your transitions down. For more information on the kiteboarding levels, you can check out PASA or IKO. I'll leave links to their website in the description below. They're basically the two main organizations that set the standard for kiteboarding. Kind of like PADI if you're familiar with scuba diving. On average, you're going to probably pay around $600 to $1,200 in lessons to get to that level two and possibly even a level three rider. If you're unsure about committing to a long course, most schools have a tester package, which is typically around two to three hours. And you'll get a good idea of what the sport's about, kind of judge whether you want to continue or not. If you have a buddy to go with you, I would say it's a good idea to take your first lesson with a friend. And usually schools do offer a discount if you're doing a tandem lesson. Once you've taken some lessons and you know you want to continue to kite, your next step is buying gear or the start of your quiver. You will need a kite, control bar, harness, board, wetsuit, and pump. Once you really get in the sport, you're gonna want a small, medium, and large kite to cover a full range of wind speed so you can kite in different conditions. This price is for brand new, top of the line gear. If you do decide to go used, it's usually half the cost. I would suggest going with brand new gear However, I do get the price can be a deal breaker for some. But having new gear, you know where it's coming from. With most brands, you'll get that one year manufacturer warranty. And the, the gear is brand new, so it'll be functioning in peak performance, making it easier to progress. With buying new gear though, there are some purchasing hacks that can save you hundreds of dollars. If you're going the new gear route, wait to the end of the season. Shops usually heavily discount their last year's inventory to make room for the new kiteboard inventory. And usually the only thing that's really different from the last year's gear to the new gear is the kite color, the design, and maybe a little bit of extra tweaks that you probably won't even notice. Again, by waiting to the end of the season, you'll be saving yourself hundreds of dollars just by purchasing last year's old inventory. If you go the used gear route, you can still find some good deals. Some people buy gear before they're really even ready, try kiteboarding, and then decide they don't like it, and they end up just selling it, and it's probably only been used a handful of times. So there are deals out there. You just have to know what to look for. You usually can find used gear on eBay, Facebook Marketplace, um, and various kiteboard Facebook groups. So at first glance, this sport does look pretty pricey compared to snowboarding or biking. But if you zoom out over time and look at the continuous costs, it's really not that bad. Unlike snowboarding, once you have the equipment, it's pretty much free to kite anywhere. There's no costly lift tickets, membership fees, or you don't need gas. You have free energy from the wind. So I hope I answered any of your questions that you may have had and you have a better understanding of what 
the initial cost is in getting into the sport. If you have any questions on buying new gear versus old gear, different brands, feel free to write me a comment below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks for watching and peace.